Hi students, this is Mr. Worman here. Um, <clears throat> so today we're gonna switch gears a little bit. Um, we're gonna kind of wrap up the year. Talking about area and volume of shapes. So that's what we're gonna get to today. Um, so everyone should have one of these sheets that say guided notes on area and volume. Um, the first part of this, maybe most of today, this should be just review. This should be things we talked about in some of the stuff, honestly, in fifth grade uh, and sixth grade as well. So, um, this is a little bit of review, but it's going to help us to do extend this further and um, try out some new concepts as well later on. Okay. All right. So hopefully this will be um, fun, easy, um, no problem, because um, it should be somewhat familiar. All right. So we're going to talk about area and volume of shapes here. All right. So um, the first we're looking at here is starting off with area. Okay. So what is area to begin with? So um, we talk about area. This is the um, two-dimensional space of a shape, right? So we're really just saying this is the two-dimensional space of a shape is all we're saying. So in other words, the area of a shape is how much space could be on this piece of paper, right? That's all it is, right? So um, if we have, uh, you know, the area of the whiteboard, right? Uh, just a two-dimensional shape. That's the space inside of it, right? Whereas perimeter, which we're not talking about here, but perimeter would be a line that goes around the edge of this. That'd be a single line is the perimeter. Area is that space inside, right? Okay. And it's always going to be in units squared. Units squared. We'll talk about that in a second. All right. So how do we find the area of a rectangle? Again, most of you have done this for a lot of years at this point. Um, so two ways to think of it. Um, the way you're probably uh, heard before is going to be called uh, length times width. Okay, length times width, right? So if we have a rectangle like so, we're just multiplying length times width to find the area. So we can just abbreviate that as abbreviate that as L and W, length width, right? We understand. If you remember with our Algebra talk before um, we put two variables together, we know they're really multiplying together, right? Or a number next to a variable, um, they're multiplying together. So length times width, LW, right? Another way to say this um, is to call them base and height, right? We're going to use this language as well because um, the only shape to really use length and width always is these rectangles. Um, all the other shapes use base and height. So we can think about it the same way. Right? If this were to be the base of this rectangle, this would be the height of the rectangle, right? Base, height, okay? Or length, width. All right, just a uh, different vocab for that. Okay, so we can call that as BH. So what is the area of this rectangle to the right? All right, um, so for this kind of stuff here today, feel free to use a calculator. Um, this one's pretty easy. We don't really need it. So to find the area of the length to the right, um, find the area of this uh, rectangle to the right, we have um, 6 and 14 here, right? So on your paper, we got 14 times 6, simple enough. If we multiply that out, we're going to get a total of 84, right? 14 times 6 means 84. So we're going to say 84, and we're going to say feet squared. This is in feet. So I wrote the term feet squared there. If you were to write the whole thing out, it'd be easiest to abbreviate that as feet put that little two meaning feet squared because we have feet times feet so it's in square units 84 feet squared would be the best way to write that okay all right simple enough we all should have known how to do that let's keep going here uh right so we'll talk about triangles this may be maybe oh, slightly more challenging but not too much so how do we find the area of a triangle okay so if we were to look back of this shape for a second, if I could direct your attention here, we could notice that we could cut this shape into two triangles, right? So parallelograms, which have basically the same formula, and rectangles can be cut into two equal triangles. Well, we should know if this was, we called this length times width, or in other words, base times height to find the area. If we cut this into half, we can imagine that this space right here, right? That would be one half of our base times height, right? And that's exactly what our formula is for a triangle. So it's one half times base times height. Okay, so that should help us to remember it. Um, we always have to take one half of that base times height. Okay, so it's like cutting a triangle and cutting a rectangle in half. So we'll say one half. B H. Okay. One half B H. 
Um, so another way to write this, and I think this is slightly, um, slightly easier to do in the calculator, is instead of saying 1 half base times height, we could just say uh, base, since as it says here, since multiplying by a half is the same thing as dividing by 2, we could say base times height. And instead of multiplying by half, we could divide by 2. Okay, Base times height divided by 2. Right? Same idea. This looks slightly, ever so slightly different. All right. That is a 2 if you can't quite tell. Base times height divided by 2, or 1 half base times height. Okay? 1 half bh, bh over 2. Great. Two ways to look at it. So, to be clear, what is base and height? All right. Base and height must always be perpendicular to each other, right? If you were to measure the height of the room, we'd have to go straight up and down, right? Okay? If you measure your height, we go from, you know, the top of your head to your feet, right? We don't measure from your feet to your hand outstretched to the top of your head, right? That wouldn't be your height. That'd be longer than that. Um, so height has to be straight up and down, so it has to be perpendicular, right? That has to be the height straight up and down. So it's always indicated by this little symbol right here, right? That should tell us if it's perpendicular, that little box, okay? Again, that little box there telling us it's a 90 degree angle, okay? So notice for all of these, our base and height are perpendicular to each other. So it could be um, measured from the center, right, to the end there, right? That's our base. This would be our height. It's on the side here, but it's the same thing, right? Height of it, base, okay? Or we have this exterior one, right, base times height. Notice it's not this, this side right here, right? Because that would be longer than the height. Just like, again, if we took a route where we measured from your feet uh, to the tip of your fingers to the top of your head, that would be longer than just going from your feet to your head, right? So base times height, base times height, base times height, all divided by two, right? Or all multiplied by half. All right, so looking at this triangle here, what's our base, what is the area of this triangle? All right, so notice how we have three dimensions there, three lengths, okay? Which two are the base and height? Hopefully figure that out, right? These must be perpendicular to each other. If you call this base, this height, this base, this height, doesn't matter, but these are our two base and height, right? So 13, we're not going to use that number whatsoever here because it's not the base, it's not the height. It'd be helpful if we're finding the perimeter, but if we're finding the area, just base times height divided by 2 or base times height times half. So if we were to say... Um, one half base times height, we'll say one half 12 uh, times, uh, I was going to say H, 12 times 5, right? I'm going to put a little dot there, okay? I'll rewrite that, one half of 12 times 12 times 5, okay? Or, again, 12 times 5 divided by 2, okay? Either way, we'd get the same thing. Um, one half of 12 is 6, 6 times 5 is 30. Okay, this one, 12 times 5 is 60, 60 divided by 2, 30. So we'd say, what's the area of this shape here? We're going to say 30, and I'll just, since it didn't give us um, feet or anything, we'll just say 30 units squared, a little 2 up there, right? 30 units squared. All right, cool. Hopefully review so far. We'll keep rolling. All right. So that is area. So we just have to get a little premise on that before we can figure out volume. So what is volume? So if area is this two-dimensional space, like the top of the table or something, right? Volume is how much could fit inside of something, right? So if we're talking about volume, um, we're really talking about um, these cubed units that could fit inside something, right? So we're talking about three-dimensional shape and volume is written cubed units or units cubed, right? So if area was in square units, this is in cubed units. Okay. So volume measures the space inside a three-dimensional object. So um, today we're going to look a little bit at prisms. These are a special type of three-dimensional object. So prisms are a type of three-dimensional object where both ends of the prisms have the same two-dimensional shape, and they're connected by rectangular sides. So I have a couple examples here, a triangular prism, rectangular prism, hexagonal prism, right? All these, the same idea here, okay? Pull in here, right? So in this case, here we have another example of rectangular prism, okay? This side seems to be a square, right? A square is a type of rectangle. And um, 
there we have it. it looks a lot like that rectangular prism the idea with a prism is we have one shape and then it's connected by rectangles on all the sides to the same shape on the opposite side okay so if we are to look here at another one right we have this rectangle here which looks to be like a square all right and then it's connected by the same shape right here by squares or rectangles on all the sides here we have a um, hexagonal one okay so we have one hexagon here the same hexagon is here again it's connected by rectangles all around okay one example triangular prism okay triangle connected by another triangle on the other side and rectangles on all the sides all right so if we have a prism if we have a good idea what that is now right so if we need to find the volume of any prism we just need to find the area of the we're going to call this the base with a capital b okay they use the same terms why they do it i don't know but we have to find the area of the base we're not going to be doing these hexagonal ones but right find the area of the base for any of these prisms and then once you find the area of that base you just multiply it by the height of the shape Area of the base multiplied by the height of the shape, right? This is going to be the height of the shape. Even if it's on its side, we're still going to consider the height of the shape. If we're doing height multiple times in these, sometimes for triangles, we think it's about this as our second height, height two, if we want. But the area of this times the height, right? Area of this times the height, right? Area of this times the height, okay? All those will find us the volume of R rectangular prisms okay so let's look at one like so we'll look at the special case of rectangular prism today we'll probably look at triangular prism tomorrow um, rectangular prism so how do we find the volume of a right rectangular prism again it's called a rectangular prism because we have a rectangle here's another one here we've got a rectangle on the side connected to a rectangle right so that's why it's called rectangular prism so to find the area of the rectangular prism find the area of the base in this right and then we're going to multiply that by the height of the prism. Base, height of the prism. Okay. In this case, for this example, right, you find the area of this base here. You want to call that the base times the height, right? Or if you think this is the base times the height, right? So if I had to find the area of this, we see it's there's six there, right? It's two by three, two times three being six, and it's four deep. So we have two times three is six. Six times the four is 24 cubic units for this one. All right, another way to find the, um, uh, the volume of a right rectangular prism is really to say length times width, which would find the area of the base, okay, and then times our height. Okay, great. So what's the volume of this right rectangular prism to the right? Well, we'd find the area of the base, in this case, 3 times 10 being 30, 30 inches squared. We take those inches squared times this height of 4, 30 times 4. So we'd end up with 120 units cubed. Okay. All right. So we went over some examples there. Um, rectangles, triangles, right rectangular prism volumes. Okay. Now what you are to do is look around the room. And you will find many of these shapes around the room. Um, and you are to uh, use some rulers to measure some of these out. Okay. So you find a rectangle, a triangle, and a right rectangular prism. So um, rectangles can be things like, you know, the cover of the book, um, things like that, right? Um, triangles, uh, you should be able to find some in there, um, you know, but you can also, you know, um, I'm sure find some around there somewhere. Um, for our right rectangular prisms, think of um, right boxes you can find or uh, baskets, things like that would uh, have that shape in them as well. Okay, so um, what I want you to do is, again, describe the object. So if you find a um, rectangular prism, let's say the basket, uh, the white basket in the back, right? That could be the description. And then dimensions of it, you're going to say, um, you can say a length of, if it's four inches by five inches by eight inches, whatever it is, okay? So you can say um, four by five by eight. Okay, simple enough. So you get to walk around, walk around the room and uh, use a partner for this as well. 
Um, all right, so you could get this done here by the end of the period. Um, and if you finish that, work on some of your other missing assignments. All right, thanks for your work today. All right, have a great day.